Good evening, I'm Pietro, and today together with my colleagues Mary and Jessica, we're presenting our work on porting the GNU Core 5 toolchain. Um, so let me first give you a bit of background on the project. So the Open Hardware Group is an industry consortium developing RISC-V cores for people to use. The Core 5 is based on the pool project from uh, HH Zurich and the University of Bologna. Um, in our project, we will focus on CV32E40P, which is a 32-bit microcontroller class device. Um, so here we see all the components which make up a modern GNU toolchain. So for standard risk 5 we can already compile um, ADA, C, and C++, and in the future, Fortran and OpenMP. Uh, we have the compiler GCC, the GNU assembler GAS, the GNU debugger GDB, and a set of binary utilities. We also have low-level libraries to support C and C++ on any risk 5 variant, and a range of standard C libraries for systems both large and small. We also have the option to use a handwritten assembler, or to use CGen to generate assembler, disassembler, and simulator from a semi-formal description. So let us look at supporting the core 5 variants of RISC-V. Um, these are all standard RISC-V cores, meaning that we can use the standard assembler and compiler. However, Core 5 has a number of instruction set extensions, which we wish to support as well. Our initial focus is to extend the compiler and assembler, which are highlighted in red, to support these instructions. For now, we finished implementing our first instruction in being used in GCC, and in the future, we hope to extend CGen to give us automatic generation together with a simulator. So here you can see how we approach the implementation. Uh, we first provide support in the assembly and linker, followed by GCC building function support, and finally GCC optimization patterns to use those instructions automatically. So these three steps are the structure that will be used to implement each instruction, starting with hardware loop. Code optimization for now is out of scope of this project. Um, so the project has been running since the middle of August. We plan to support the five group of instructions shown here. So to make it clear that the toolchain is targeting core 5, we use the vendor field of the target triplet. First, we shall have risk 5 for HU core 5 elf instead of risk 5 for HU unknown elf. We also provide additional architecture specifications to specify either the whole core 5 support, X core 5, or just select the parts. For example, for hardware loop, hardware loops, it is uh, X core 5 hardware loop. Finally, all core 5 instructions will be prefixed by CV. And the first commit to upgrade the same blood to support hardware loops was made and is downloaded by source from the open hardware group GitHub and as a prepackaged binary from Mimicosm. So um, now we'll be explaining how was our process of adding an instruction. It's important to note that while the examples and files shown are risk 5 specific, the information is transferable to other architecture ports. So we'll be using CVSTAR-I as an example for the presentation. CV star I is part of the Core 5 hardware loops extension and declares the address of the offset to the start of the loop as well as the loop number, which can be 0 or 1, depending if it's an inner or an outer loop. Um, hardware loops also provide a total of six instructions, CV star I being one of them, and here you can see its generic pattern. Um, so let's move on to the first part of the implementation, being it used. So, um, in order to follow the implementation, some changes we need to be made. So, we need to modify the opcodes library, both in coding and decoding, modify the assembler to use the new table entries and extend their link linker locations. Um, yeah, and here you can see all the main files changed. So, let's implement a new instruction. Uh, first, we add the instruction to the RISC-V opcodes structure, which contains all the instructions available for the RISC-V architecture. You note that the structure is generic, but the specifics of your RISC-V. So in other words, all the architectures will have similar tables, but the details vary from architecture to architecture. So let's break it down. Um, we first have the name of the instruction, CV star I. X lane, which indicates the instruction length requirements, either 32 or 64 or 0, 0 for both. The instruction class, which is defined the risk 5 header file inside in a num set. So in this example, we had to add a specialized class for the hardware loop extension. This might not be necessary if your new instruction already fits an existing class. 
uh, we had to add the instruction operands, which in this example are DI and B1. DI mapping to the loop number, while B1 maps to the immediate. Um, and they are given in the, the order they appear in the symbolic assembler and not the encoded instruction, as you can see. We then have our match and mask um, define the risk file opcodes header file. So the instruction masks are used to hard code common encoding fields in the instruction, such as the opcode, and also to mask preset bits with one in the operand encoding fields. You can see how it is calculated here. So um, if you exclusive or a binary instruction with the match and all bits are the same as mask, then the return would be zero if the instruction is of type match. And here you can see a table that shows how the mask works for our CV star example. So it hard codes the source register, the function, the destination register, and the opcode. We then have a match field checking the encoding. Um, we also have the match function, uh, which determines if a word corresponds to this instruction. So match opcodes will give you a simple pattern match, meaning that it doesn't require any additional assistance from the function. And here you can see the match function, which does the calculation that I previously mentioned. And lastly, we have the info, which is a collection of bits describing the instruction, notably any relevant hazard information. For example, it can be used to indicate it is an alias, a macro, or even a branch instruction. Uh, Mary will now give details on being its use. Thank you, Pietra. The other file that must be edited in the opcodes directory is risc5disc.c. In this file, there is a function called print ints args, which, we, which disassembles a bit stream. All operands must be added to this function. We can use this to ensure that our instructions are being printed out correctly during assembly. As described later, this is essential for testing. The example on this slide is the branch offset operand B1. I would like to draw your attention to the extract macro, which must be defined in the include opcode directory in the RISC-V header file. This macro extracts the bits used for the B1 operand from the bitstream. The op other operations are specific for this operand. The immediate field refers to a half word address because instructions are on half word boundaries. We shift it left one bit to turn it into a full byte address, and the PC is required as the offset is PC relative. So now we move on to the gas config directory. In the file tcriskv.c, the validate risk 5 instruction function ensures that all bits in the instruction are set. The encode macro, which is defined in the risk 5 header file, is passed a value of all ones. This returns a value with only the bits set by the high operand high. This is then ORed with all the bits set so far. The example on this slide is the loop number, which would only return a value of one in the seventh bit position. At the end of this function, all bits in the variab variable used bits must be set to one. Otherwise, an error will be generated. In this same file, there is a function called RISC-V-IP, which assembles an instruction into its binary format. All operands must be added here. In this function, you can check that an operand is an acceptable value. This example shows the code for a loop number. As previously explained, a loop number is a constant value or zero or one. In this function, we check these bounds and the type. If it is not what is expected, then we produce an error. The main part of this function that does most of the work is insert operand. To ensure that insert operand macro works correctly, in the RISC-V header file, the mask for the bits encoded for the operand and the offset of the encoded bits must be defined. These are used in the insert operand macro along with the instructions opcode and the actual value of the operand to produce the instructions binary representation. Now we are going to go into detail on how 
we added a relocation to GNU Benutils. The linker is an important part of Benutils. Performs two operations: relaxation, taking a complex instruction and replacing it with a simpler instruction, and relocation. Relocations are implemented at link time, so it is tested as part of the linker tests, not the assembly. Before link time, an instruction might make use of a label. For example, the immediate in the cv.starti. The label will then be assigned a temporary symbolic reference until link time. During link time, the label may change its position as the code is relaxed. Once the actual address is known, the temporary symbolic reference is replaced by the relocated address label. Relocation table, or how-to table, which we will explain in further detail later on, stores a list of pointers to the absolute address called fix-ups. These are changed when the loader relocates the code. If a fix-up crosses a boundary, an overflow error is flagged by the assembler. The Core 5 hardware loop extension has a relocation for cv.starti. As you can see, the relocation is used by the 12-bit immediate and refers to the start of the loop. It is PC relative, local, and retire, requires a 1-bit left shift. The first step to add a new relocation is to add the ELF and BFD relocation types. This requires a small change in three files. Include ELF RISC5.H, BFD ELF XX RISC5.C, and BFD RELOC.C. Each relocation is assigned a number, 0 to 255. The relocation number for this relocation is temporary 224. I will describe later an issue with this. Then next, add a description. Oh, sorry, Pietro, do you mind going back to the slide before? Sorry. Add a description of how the ELF relocation will be handled in BFD, ELF NN risk 5c The relocation requires a one-bit left shift, which is performed by the encode macro already introduced. The amount to be shifted is recorded in the how-to table. Please note that while the how-to field is called right shift, it is a left shift that we are performing and we are saving the amount of bits shifted to this field. This is the example of a fix-up, a how-to table entry. Remember the relocation is PC relative and to be left shifted one bit. The assembler will throw an error if the relocation overflows using the complain overflow unsigned function. The final step is to return to tcrisc5.c and add the BDF type to the MD apply fix function. This will sorry, BFD type to the MD apply fix function. This will be the function that is called to handle fix-ups. First, it looks up the fix-up in the how-to table. Then, it defines target and delta, two variables that alter what is printed at disassembly. Then, it checks for an overflow. Finally, it removes some of the information from the header records of the object file using BFD putel32. For this extension, the relocations have been given temporary numbers. This is because vendor-specific linker relocations do not yet have a mechanism to add numbers without maybe stepping on someone's toes. Only once the relocation numbers have been set in stone can we upstream our work. Now that we have added an instruction, we come to the most important step, testing. To test the assembler, Benutils has the gas test suite. The tests assemble the given input and pattern match the produced disassembly output with the given expected disassembly. To add a test for RISC V, add an assembly file, disassembly file, and if the tests expect to fail, a .l file. An example of a cv.starti input test file is shown on this slide. The corresponding output file is shown here. 
file starts with hash options defining how to produce the disassembly. You can see the assembler options include an mArch option. This will be discussed in more detail when I explain how to run the assembler. The next line describes the disassembly options, dash D for objump. The hash options are followed by the expected disassembly pattern. Since the tests use pattern matching, it is possible to use regular expressions in the tests. To, use the, to test the relocations, Renutils has the LD test suite. The tests use the same format as the gas tests, an assembly file, disassembly file, and an error file, except the error output file is now a .l file. The test must be added to LD risk 5exp which we'll call it. Here you can see the cv.starti test assembly file. Mary, I've made you presenter so you can control. Okay, thanks. This is the start of the corresponding disassembly file. As with the gas tests, the file starts with hash options, which define how to produce the disassembly. The dash r disassembly option prints the, di the relocations. This is the dis expected disassembly. As you can see, there are labels printed. Finally, we need to build it. Th this slide shows the commands I use to build the assembler. I create and enter a Benutils build directory. Then I run configure with a core 5 specific target. Next, I run make and run the tests with make check gas and make check ld. If all tests pass, use make install to install the assembler to get to the given install directory. To use the assembler, run the command shown on the slide, where test.s is your assembly file. The mArch option tells the assembler that the instructions belong to the 32-bit base integer RISC-V instruction set with the standard multiply and compressing extensions and a Core 5 hardware loop custom extension. Jessica will now tell you about our work with GCC. Thank you, Mary. So now we are going to move on to GCC. The main files we edit are in the GCC config RISC 5 directory. In this directory, there are some machine description files written in Scheme. The existing RISC 5 machine description file can be edited or a new one can be created depending on the types of changes made. The predicates machine description file defines all operand constraints. In order to generate the assembly for CV Starter, we must define instruction in a machine description file. For Core 5, we have created a new file specifically for the Core 5 extensions. An example is given on this slide, so let's break it down. When defining the instruction, a name is given. This will be used to generate a gen function during building. This function can be called to print out the desired assembly with given operands. Note that the operands are numbered. In this example, we use 0 and 1 in the order that they will be passed into the gen function. To ensure that your new instructions are not optimised out, this must be defined in the inspect fee enum at the top of the file. In order to validate any operands we use, we use match operand and define a predicate in the predicates machine description file. We have created two new predicates for CV start I. However, this will not be required if your operand matches the constraints in an existing predicate. The example on the slide shows the predicate for a loop number. Here we ensure that it is a constant value using match code and that is, that is either zero or one. If the instruction is target specific, then we must state this. The CV start I instruction is specific for, the, for Core 5. Therefore, we add the Core 5 hardware loop target. This can be left blank if the instruction is not target specific. Finally, we add the desired assembly for the instruction. The CV start I instruction has two operands loop number indicated by the operand number zero and an immediate value represented by one. 
the percent sign in front of the operand number will print out the actual value of the operands in assembly. So now we need to build GCC. GCC is built in two stages. The first stage builds a minimal GCC that is sufficient to build the C libraries. The second stage uses this minimal, minimal version to build a complete GCC. For our purposes, we only care about stage one, not the libraries. The build steps are very similar to bin utils. Open and enter a build directory, configure, make, and make install. The only change is the configure options. The slide shows the configure command for GCC stage one. After building stage one, we can use the compiler as is or build newlib and recompile GCC as a second stage. This would follow the same steps, just with different configure options. So we identified memcopy as a key function that could benefit from the use of hardware loops. Memcopy is sometimes called when copying data. An example of this is when copying one large structure to another. This slide shows how we defined a hardware loop memcopy instruction in the same format as previously explained. In the RISC-5C file, we call the gen function of this instruction, passing it the destination and source registers, as well as a temporary register that will be used to implement the copy. This is called instead of the generic mem copy when data is large, optimization is switched on, and the target is core 5. This is indicated by the mArch option of X core 5 and X four core 5 hardware loop, as previously explained. So now that we've shown you how, to add, how we added that hardware loop extension to GCC, it's time to show you that it works via a demo. The demo will revolve around mem copy. In this demo, we will be compiling this file. In the command line, line, we are able to change the value of n and thus change the sizes of the structures copied. For different sizes, the methods used to copy the structures changes. The demonstration will combine the assembler, linker and GCC that we have previously explained. So I'll now hand over to Mary who will run the demonstration. Thank you, Jessica. Uh, I just have to work out how to share my screen. You should have four buttons along the middle and the fourth, uh, the one of them. Along the bottom, there are four buttons and one of them is to share your screen. That's it. Yep, thanks. First, I will compile this file with a very low structure size of four bytes. As you can see, the compiler uses an intrinsic version of the nano newlib library memcopy function to copy the structure byte by byte. If I increase the size to 12 bytes, you can see that the same methods are used but the code size has ballooned. Any larger will be inefficient. I can increase this, the size, by one to 13. You can see that, uh, that without the hardware loop, so it calls memcopy. Now with the hardware loop, Instead of memcopy, it has cv.setupi. It creates a hardware loop to uh, copy these 13 bytes. Now, this critical boundary between 12 and 13 works well with memcopy, but it needs more investigation behind for hardware loops. For now, it uses the same uh, boundary as memcopy, but once we have physical hardware, we will need to be able to, we will be able to test this and find out where the best place to put the boundary is 
to improve speed when using hardware loops. I will now compile with a 40 byte structure just so you can uh, see that it is using the same method cv.setupi. Now I can show you how to use the Benutils assembler and disassembler. So first I will assemble the 40 byte file. Then I will disassemble a dot out. So here you can see we have cv.setupi the hardware loops all work. I will now pass it back to Pietra. Thank you, Mary. Um, so if you wish to try using the new compiler, you can download a convenient prebuilt binary from the Embecosm website. You'll find versions for all the major operating systems, along with links to the source code, the scripts to build, to scripts to build the tooling and test results. Um, but we also encourage you to become developers. You can find out more via the Open Hardware Group Mattermost, more specifically in the GNU Tools channel. You can also sign up to the Open um, Hardware Group mailing list and attend our monthly meetings. And finally, we would welcome your pull requests against the development code, uh, development code basis on GitHub. Um, thank you all very much for listening. Please ask any questions. Uh, thank you, uh, Mary, Pietra, Jessica, um, uh, for that. And uh, well done, braving failing internet connections left, right and centre. That was why you lost Pietra and Jessica from time to time during the talk. Um, 